Uh, Jordan Reichert of the Vancouver Brown Vegan Association, here with Gene Bauer of uh, Farm Sanctuary fame, uh, author of uh, Farm Sanctuary and uh, Living in a Farm Sanctuary Lifestyle, uh, the new book that you just put out. Gene, uh, uh, great presentation today. Uh, you know, you walk into the place and you're immediately just overwhelmed with people approaching you. I mean, what's that like from coming from a place of, you know, selling uh, you know, veggie dogs at uh, Grateful Dead concerts, and obviously you're an activist, uh, and now having all these things around you. Well, it's amazing to see the enthusiasm for this lifestyle. I feel very lucky to do the work I do. I feel humbled by the fact that so many people are interested in this work, and, and very grateful. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a busy time, it's a busy day, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, want to get books and want to talk about these issues, and it's a beautiful thing. So, um, I'm just very grateful for everything. Of course, yes. And uh, so, what for you, <clears throat> sorry, you come back, come from a sociological background, right? So, and I'm wondering if there's anybody who's of particular inspiration for you uh, in sociology. Well, you know, I am interested in how society works, how people create good or bad things and can enhance or take away from life and health on the planet. And so sociology is very interesting to me. And, you know, animal abuse is a people problem. So if we're going to create positive change, we need to figure out how to best influence people. And for me, you know, that was just sort of a training. But in terms of who I'm inspired by, I look actually at a lot of activists from the 60s, you know, people like Martin Luther King. I look at the music and people like Pete Seeger, who, you know, were saying very important things in their music, a uh, John Baez. Um, you go back to Mahatma Gandhi, who he did. So those are some of the folks I look at and I'm inspired by and try to incorporate their approach in what I do. Definitely. Uh, you know, from a sociological perspective, and of course, uh, the uh, Institute for Critical Animal Studies has done a lot of good work uh, in terms of addressing some of the issues capitalism presents to uh, the vegan movement and to uh, the animal activist movement. Uh, I'm wondering, how do you feel about uh, capitalism in terms of its potential to co-op the vegan movement and especially and turn it away from something that's about the, uh, the ethics related to animals and more about making money and the potential impact that can have on the environment as the scale of veganism intensifies. Well, capitalism is a big issue to deal with and money and what that means. And, you know, there are challenges between money and mission with organizations and with businesses. And, you know, if it's all about the money, that is a bad thing. Um, but when there is money to be made through plant-based business, you know, then it can actually compete with the money being made off of animal exploiting businesses. So there are different places where there are interfaces and I think you know, the world is what it is, and you know, it's a matter of how do we work within that, and, and how do we work outside of that, and how do we try to create something new, you know, where money and commodification is not the norm, which it kind of is. You know? So, it, it's not an easy answer, and it's not an easy issue, and it is a process, but, you know, we are in a capitalist world, and ideally, the marketplace would reflect human values and what is in human and animal and the earth's interests and that we would spend money in a way that was reasonable and that was good for us and the planet and animals and and that the marketplace would reflect uh, our humanity. So theoretically that's possible. Now whether it can happen practically, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, but there are some inklings of it, and there are, I think, some folks trying to make that happen, or at least in some ways. So, I mean, in terms of the movement and growing it and seeing it, I mean, obviously it's come a long way since uh, you started your act activism, and uh, it's grown into, I mean, the culture's completely different now, right? Uh, vegan, uh, vegan products are obviously much more available than they were before. What do you think, in terms of effectiveness, because this is an issue that comes up a lot lately with 
organizations uh, which do more direct action focused work such as DXC perhaps versus uh, promoting just veganism with no confrontation or disruption of uh, the, the dominant discourse of society that animals are ours to use and exploit. I'm a big fan of direct action and the most important direct action each of us makes every day is what we eat. You know, so in terms of how do we create shifts where people are eating more plants and less animals, uh, we need to look at various tactics and approaches and different tactics work with different people. And I don't have a crystal ball so I cannot say certain things are better than others for sure and for always. Uh, I can only speak to my own experience and and that is that confrontation oftentimes turns people away and puts up walls to people who don't want to hear certain things and are told it in a certain way will sometimes block it and will stay blocked and may even dig in. Um, on the other hand, it's possible that by confronting somebody and slapping them in the face, they might wake up. You know, it really is impossible to say this is always right or this is always wrong. I think different situations call for di different tactics. Um, there are things that other folks are doing that I wouldn't do, but I'm not here to tell them they can't do it. Um, I, I would be always open to a conversation about, okay, what is the impact? Of and ask that question. And then trying to be open-minded and honest about it, what is effective? So those are the kind of questions I ask and look at and, and try to learn from and explore. Um, so for me, you know, that's what activism is about. It's about creating change and what is effective. And, and sometimes, you know, you can be right, but not be very effective. <laughs> and so that is an area that, you know, we can be right with what we're saying, and we can say it, and we can turn people off. So to me, it's about being effective, and how do we do that? And that's the question. I did mention briefly in talking, somebody raised a question about honey and that we can make choices that might be best. Uh, we, have to, we have to gauge what's best, both maybe in a symbiotic relationship, in some degree, how we use these uh, uh, and what they get out of the production of food for us uh, versus the local, small-scale uh, consumption of honey and stuff. Um, do you think we, I mean, because this is happening all over the world, obviously, uh, but people are always trying to manage wildlife, manage other animals, and I'm wondering, do you think that we are responsible enough with the power that we have over them to really be making those decisions. No. <laughs> I mean, if <laughs> Thank you look, for your I mean, honesty. If, if you look at what we have done, we've created enormous harm. You know, and so the question is, can we learn? And can we become more respectful uh, and responsible and live in a way that is mutually beneficial? And so when the person asked about honey, you know, the point I made is that you know, lots of bees are exploited to produce fruit and nuts and vegetables to pollinate crops. And so as vegans, we're eating these crops. Um, you know, so the world is messy and it's not simple. Um, but to me it's about creating mutually beneficial relationships as much as possible. And one thing I think that we need to be careful of as human beings is that usually we are the powerful group in their relationship. Yeah. And to not quickly say, well, they like it. You know, so I think we need to be very careful about assuming that a certain type of relationship is in fact mutually beneficial. But that to me is, is the goal, to try to create those kinds of mutually beneficial relationships. And you know, as I mentioned, being vegan to me is an aspiration to live as kindly as possible, recognizing that we're all humans and we live on a planet where we're going to cause harm, whether we like it or not, but to cause as little harm as possible and to continuously learn and try to be better. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Raska Rescue, which uh, just uh, moved from Alberta to Shamanus on Vancouver Island. Have you ever been to Vancouver Island? Or I have I've been to BC, but not to Vancouver Island. Okay, so uh, yeah, you should come over sometime. Definitely come visit. Uh, but uh, so they're a, a sanctuary that's been operating in Alberta for several years, and they just moved to Shamanus. And you know, a big part of their focus is education, of course. Their animals aren't there. Uh, as uh, objects for people to just, you know, come and play with and, and use, so to speak, or gaze at. Uh, you know, we have petting zoos in Victoria and such, which seem to be much more exploited because they don't, uh, they don't educate the public at all about anything. It's just that they're there to view, and then there's nothing about the factory farming, 
uh, conditions that often animals uh, are, are raised in and such and the effects it has on animals uh, and the food that they're consuming. Um, how important do you think that education piece is to farm sanctuary? Uh, and how do you feel the best way to get that is across to people uh, in that type of, type of a setting? I think education is critically important and I think that sanctuaries create an opportunity for people to see animals as individuals. Uh, the animals ultimately become ambassadors, but they need to be treated with respect. And when you enter a sanctuary, there's a sign that says, please remember that you're entering the animal zone and that you're a guest here. And the tone is one of respect and recognizing that these are animals who are individuals. In some cases, they come in very abusive situations, so we need to understand that and, and behave accordingly. Um, but sanctuaries play an important role at helping individuals, but I think more importantly at modeling a different kind of relationship. One that is respectful, one that is compassionate, one that ultimately is mutually beneficial. I like that idea of it's their space that you're entering. It's not our space that we're viewing them within necessarily. I mean, obviously we've created it, but it is a space where power has been given over to them. Uh, rather than Ideally, it would be like a co-created space. Yeah, yeah that's Ideally. a nice way. You know? So that's part of what our thinking is these days, to try to create a co-created space, you know. And, and human beings, you know, we are, you know, the powerful species on the planet. We are really sort of dictating a lot of things. Right? And even in sanctuaries, we create the space and we put up the fencing and we decide when to feed and when to medicate. You know, so we're still in that kind of relationship, but to kind of to step back and create one that is, you know, more co-created you know, would be ideal. And, and but that's a process. How do, what does that look like? We're in the process of trying to figure it out. Yeah. Well, definitely, definitely. And, and the way that you comport yourself in that space, I think, is a part of understanding how that difference exists. So we always ask people once what their favorite animal is, and we ask them to do the impression of their favorite animal to show us just how much they love that. Well, cows are gentle. They move in the in the rhythms of the earth. They chew their cud. So I've got a green smoothie over there that I'll be drinking, and that's going to be my cow. And that's going to be your cow. My cow pressure, right? Okay. There. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no that's one. <laughs> got a little one there. Got a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for all your work. I really appreciate. It. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. And uh, yeah, best best to you in uh, all your future advocacy and activism uh, here and obviously around the world. Thank you. And same to you. And we'll keep at it. Take care.